Now that we learned all the derivative rules, it's time to actually start applying them. And so in this section, we're learning how to apply derivatives by finding where the functions are increasing and decreasing, as well as relative extrema. So let's go ahead and just start with definitions. The first definition is the pretty obvious. Increasing is when the graph is going up from left to right, and decreasing is when the graph is going down from left to right. So I have a sample of a graph here. We're going to indicate where this graph is increasing and graph is decreasing. First, let's do that by shading, and then we'll actually pick appropriate intervals to go for that. So let me do increasing in green. So that's where my graph is going up from left to right. So it's increasing here. It's increasing here and through here. And then every place else, it's decreasing. So I'll denote that by pink. So it's decreasing down through here, all the way through there, and then all the way through there. So it's really obvious to pick it out. The more difficult thing seems to be to actually specify the intervals. Now, it needs to be in intervals because I have a whole interval of where it's increasing and decreasing. It's not just a specific point. So the key part of this here is when it says from left to right. So when I'm talking left to right, increasing and decreasing should always be done by specifying the x values of the graph, no y values of this answer here. So let's talk about the increasing first. So we'll do those in green. So my first increasing part starts right here, looks to be at negative 5. And that goes up until right here, which looks to be negative 3. And so I'm doing these in interval notation, so my smallest to my largest value. And then I need to specify whether the outskirts needs to be in open parentheses or closed brackets or some sort of combination. Well, the answer to these are always going to be open parentheses because at my endpoints, it's neither increasing nor decreasing. It's just the point in between these two intervals. Okay, so that's one of them. The next one starts about right here, which looks to be approximately like one half, maybe a little bit smaller. And it stops right here, which looks to be around six and a half. So those are my intervals where it's increasing, and now my decreasing intervals. So let's talk about this middle interval first. We know it starts to be at the same place where my increasing ended, at negative 5. And we know it ends at the same place where my other increasing started, somewhere close to 1 half. So that's the easy one. Okay, now let's do this one over here on the right. We know it starts to be around 6.5. And where does it end? Well, it ends all the way on the right. And so this is where some of the students um, make simple mistakes. If it's ending on the right, then it's ending at positive infinity. Now, what's happening is because people think that this graph is going down, that this answer should be a negative infinity. But remember, these are only dealing with x values with left and right. And so since this is the very right-hand side of the graph, it's only going to be the positive infinity. Same thing over here for my left interval of decreasing. It's going to start over here at the very left-hand side of the graph. So it starts at negative infinity, and it ends right here around negative 5. So just because it's up doesn't mean it's positive. Remember, I'm talking about left and right. So I'm talking about the very left-hand side of this graph, and so that's why it's over here at negative infinity. So just to recap, to visualize where it's increasing and decreasing is pretty easy, but then to try and pick these out, it becomes a little bit more complicated. Just remember, it's only dealing with x values. It's only dealing with left and right values. One other thing to remember is that these are always parentheses, because we never include specific endpoints of whether it's increasing or decreasing, because it cannot be both at the same time. So my endpoints is just the point in between all of these values, and so that's why we don't ever include them, and that's why it's always parentheses. Okay. So I have another similar example here, except for the wording has changed. 
So this one asks you to specify the intervals on which the derivative of the given function is positive and which the derivative is negative. So it's asking us to do the same thing, but the wording is a little bit different. So when it asks for the derivative, remember the derivative gives us lots of things, and one of those things gives us the slope. So this is basically asking for when the slope is positive and when the slope is negative. So that's what this is asking in a different language. Now we know when the slope is positive, our line is going up from left to right, hence it's increasing. And when our slope is negative, our line is going down from left to right, and therefore it is decreasing. So this is just asking us to pick out the intervals on which it's increasing and decreasing. It just gives it to us in a different language. I suggest that you pause the video here and try and figure out the intervals of these on your own. So first let me shade where I am increasing in green. And where I am decreasing in pink. And this one's a little easier because it has the points specified where we switch from increasing and decreasing. Okay, so now that I have them shaded from increasing and decreasing, let's try and pick out what this problem is specifically asking for. So it's asking for basically where my graph is increasing or where my derivative is positive. Or another way I can write this is my derivative is greater than zero. That's just saying where my derivative is positive. Or where my graph is decreasing or where my derivative is negative. Or again, another way we can write this is where my derivative is less than zero or a negative value. So another way this problem might be asked is to figure out where f prime of x is greater than zero, meaning the same thing is where our derivative is positive, meaning the same thing is where my graph is increasing. Or where my f prime of x is less than zero, same thing, derivative is negative, or where my graph is decreasing. So because some students get this mixed up from left to right, let's try and symbolize it below the graph, and then we'll actually pick out our intervals over here. So my graph is increasing from the very left-hand side of my graph up until this value here. My x value is what we worry about, so my x value is 3. So it's increasing from the left, or negative infinity, up to my x value of 3. Then it's decreasing from this point here up until, up until this point here, which is negative 1. Then it's increasing from negative 1 up until this value here, which is 2. Then it's decreasing from 2 up until my x value of 4. And then my last, it's increasing from 4 up until the very end of my graph, which is on the right-hand side of my graph, or positive infinity. So hopefully these intervals down here make a little bit more sense when we're trying to pick out the x values of increasing and decreasing. So anytime I have a purple line down here, it's increasing. So it's increasing from negative infinity to 3. It's increasing from negative 1 to 2 and it's increasing from 4 to infinity, or that's where my derivative is positive. And anytime I had a pink shaded region or a red specified region down here, that's where my graph is decreasing. So I'm decreasing from negative 3 to negative 1, and I lost my negative up there. And it's also decreasing from 2 to 4. So that is where my derivative is negative. So hopefully now you see the visuals of where graphs are increasing and decreasing, and therefore you can pick out the intervals of where they are also increasing and decreasing, or where our derivative is positive or negative, or where f prime of x is greater than zero, or f prime of x is less than zero, because those are all three different ways to be asking this same type of problem. Now, on the next video, we're not going to focus on the visuals, 
but we're going to be focusing on the function aspect. What if this gives us to us in function notation and we don't have a visual to go off of? 